In today's session we'll talk about reinforced concrete wall footing and as you see in the sketch here we have a wall footing here just composed the concrete wall and the the footing itself and of course this runs continuously like that throughout the entire building as you know so we'll design this always per foot per foot only this is one foot that is all what we need to do um, well, I'll go through the elements of the design we have first of all this uh, QA which is uh, the load bearing QA is soil load bearing capacity which means the strength of soil against the loads, applied loads and these are the loads applied via the wall <coughs> excuse me so the load is composed of dead load and live load I'll come to this one as we go to the and get to the stage of reinforced concrete design because you need to factor these ones anyway so that is the, the bearing capacity for soil and we have the as we know from reinforced concrete we have the this is called H the height of the footing and this is called H1 the remaining distance between the the grade and the bottom of the the footing this will be given in the question because these are based on the soil investigation and of course we have to know the difference between the depth effective depth and the cover and the cover is dependent on the soil or the degree of exposure so according to the the American Concrete Institute the cover for for, for soil is three inches clear as you see here in the specifications it says it should be three inches that is the clear cover and of course beside that we have the the uh, diameter because this the effective depth goes through the half of the diameter of the bar so approximately I'll say this is we'll use 3.5 inches as cover always this is approximate we don't need to detail it but this is where the 3.5 is coming from and then <coughs> we have something called QE which is the net soil pressure The net soil pressure is composed is actually is the we subtract the soil here we have the soil soil also applies load so this is load coming from soil and there's also the concrete weight itself is also a load as a weight sitting on the so if we say for example the the soil bearing capacity is 100 and we have a load here 1000 so the soil pressure is is composed of 1000 plus the soil weight and the concrete weight and we need to subtract these to able to to be able to get to these ones and to do that we need to know the soil density and the soil density is called gamma soil and this is we'll use it is an approximate value we'll use this to be a equal to 100 pound per cubic foot and for of course we'll have concrete density that will be equal to approximately 150 pound per cubic foot of course there are different types of concretes we have but this is an average this is the normal weight concrete but there's lightweight concrete heavyweight concrete and so on and so forth but we'll in our in our examples we'll use only normal weight concrete just to make sure that we so this is these ones now to calculate the the net soil pressure means how much this is left how much soil pressure is left after subtracting the soil weight and the concrete weight is called net soil pressure so it will be whatever the weight of the, the whatever the soil pressure is 
or the equation will be we'll come to the equation but the equation will be q a is equal to uh, the soil bearing capacity minus the weight of soil multiplied by h that is the weight of the soil minus the concrete uh, density multiplied by the this is h1 and this is h that will be the equation for that. We'll, we'll go through this as we do an example of design. Now in the design, uh, we have two stages in the design. The first stage is we need to calculate the thickness of the footing, which is H, and the width of the footing, which is B. That's the first stage and the design. And as you know, like we mentioned before, the design means the depth, the width, and the area of steel. These are the three elements of design. So the first stage is the measurement of the footing. And the second stage will be the, the reinforced concrete design. And if we look at the, the, the way this footing is is deflecting like the following here because of the pressure of soil it will deflect in this direction that means that this part is under compression which is the concrete can take itself and this part is under tension and this is where the reinforcement or rebars are focused. They are focused at the bottom. And the the part that needs <coughs> uh, re reinforcement is, is the bottom. That's first. The second thing is the main reinforcement should be running in this direction. This is the main reinforcement. And you will see if you look at the sketch, there is reinforcement running in this direction along the the footing itself. This is just called shrinkage and temperature enforcement. This is called shrinkage and temperature reinforcement rebars. And this this is the main rebar. This is the main that we need to define we need to decide design. So uh, knowing this fact we can break this down into and to just free body diagram means just lines and if you look at carefully you see this is symmetrical if you look at this is the line of symmetry so meaning this part is same as this part what I'm trying to say here is that I, I should be able to just break only half of it and design this part and it will apply to the second part that's the meaning so we'll focus only on this part and this part we'll use the ultimate design and the ultimate design we have uh, we need to factor the loads and if you remember from the building code uh, the american building code says it is 1.2 multiplied by dead load plus 1.6 live load the canadian is 1.25 dead load plus 1.5 live load you can use either or but because we are following the, uh, the american concrete institute code so I'll be using this guy only. It doesn't matter, the difference is very, very small. So based on that, <coughs> the this load, which the, the uh, net soil pressure, the last one that we did was the net soil pressure, QE, need to be factored. So the now the QU is called factored soil pressure or bearing capacity so this will be we'll use this q u in this equation and once we get to this stage we'll do the normal design the normal design if you remember the normal design of beam whatever we we have some criteria which has the bending moment for example or shear we we'll use most of the time bending moment and all we need to do is to calculate the bending moment here what is the maximum bending moment and the maximum bending moment in the case of cantilever is equal to 
W L squared divided by 2 if you remember from the charts and in this case the W is Q U so that means it is Q U and L square divided by 2 now L square is this distance <coughs> excuse me <coughs> This is the L, and the L is, if you want to calculate the L, the L is equal to uh, B, the entire width, minus thickness, that is the thickness of the wall, divided by 2. I will call this as, as called D2. So meaning this equation becomes, <coughs> So the maximum bending moment becomes is Q U multiplied by D two squared divided by two. So I'll use this equation to calculate the maximum bending moment. Once we calculate the maximum bending moment, then we go back to the to the reinforced concrete beam design if you remember. So reinforced concrete design and that design we used the equations the, the four equations if you remember but in the case of footing all you need to do here is to use when you get the moment because you will have the moment known to you and of course the fc prime will be given to you and f5 will be given and we already have calculated the depth of the footing from stage number one so you will need you will always use this equation mu equal to ru bd square because we already calculated the bend the bending moment here so this is known to you uh, the the width is calculated in the first stage the width of the footing which is this one and the depth of course is calculated in the first stage which is the, the distance from here to here So all you need to do is, is to calculate the value of RU, as I known to you. Once you get the value of RU, you'll be able to get the value of steel ratio. And once you get the steel ratio, then you can apply the, the steel ratio equation, which is area of steel divided by B and D, and the area of steel, will be equal to steel ratio which you calculated from here multiplied by B will be always 12 inches because we are using per per foot run here and the depth of whatever depth we calculated then you get the area of steel and that's the end of the design so you got the B you got the depth and you now you have calculated the area of steel